tonight for supper I'm making cheese steak quesadillas so I have some onion and green pepper that I'm sauteing right there and I just have these small sized um, I think these are what they call the fajita size it doesn't really matter but that's what I had fajita sized tortillas I buttered each one of them on one side And then I'm just going to layer up some of my meat and the cheese and the vegetables and grill these up. So today was the day of my great big once month grocery shopping trip. And so we are sitting pretty for groceries. And what we're gonna do for supper tonight is I'm gonna make a chicken teriyaki and noodles and vegetable kind of um, mix. It was actually like a salad mix at Walmart that was on clearance. And then I'm going to um, add to it, I'm gonna add the chicken and kind of turn it into a whole meal for us. I also wanna make this chocolate Hershey bar pie for dessert. So I am gonna get started with that here because it does need to have some time to chill. And so I'm substituting the dark chocolate with almonds for the Hershey bars. And this old recipe actually calls for five cent <laughs> Hershey bars. So I don't know if that would be like your typical size that you would buy like in the checkout, like if that's a five cent, I didn't even look it up. But anyway, I'm just going to sub in probably one to one and a half of these chocolate bars here from Aldi's for this. So let's get started. The first thing that I need to do is melt marshmallows and the milk in a double boiler. So I just Googled what is a five cent Hershey bar and the wrapper from an old time Hershey bar showed that it was one and a half ounces. So I would need a total of six ounces to be four five cent Hershey bars. This one is almost 5.3. So I'm just gonna need a little bit of this one here. All right, that will be plenty. Now that the marshmallows are almost melted, I just put the chocolate in and I'm gonna continue stirring until everything is melted. And then I'm gonna to have to set this aside to cool for a while. While I wait on the, let me show it to you here. While I wait on the chocolate mixture to cool, I'm gonna cut up the chicken for the chicken teriyaki and noodles. The chocolate marshmallow mixture is cooled and so now I have one cup of whipping cream in here and I'm just gonna let this whip until it's uh, you know stiff peaks and then we'll stir it into the chocolate mixture
Okay, now I'm just gonna put this in the fridge and chill it until supper time. So here's the uh, meal kit that I told you that I had picked up at Walmart today. So it's this teriyaki veggies and noodles, and it comes with all the veggies in here, the sauce pouch, and then like this little noodle pouch. So I'm just following the directions on the back. Uh, it doesn't say to use chicken, but I, you know, diced up a bunch of chicken, seasoned it up with a garlic and herb seasoning. I'm gonna saute all of that separate. and the vegetables have to saute in a little bit of oil for about three to four minutes. This needs to get pierced and put in the microwave for 45 seconds. And then I'll add the sauce once all of this is together and we'll just have the chicken on the side in case, you know, people don't want the chicken maybe seasoned like the teriyaki or however. But that's what we're going to be having for supper tonight. I'll put that with applesauce and pickles and um, yeah, maybe even some bread and butter we'll put out as well. And that's going to be supper tonight. We finished up the chicken teriyaki <laughs> and it was actually was very, very good. Not in a demon cut through the And bread. I have to say Warren, who doesn't even like Brussels sprouts, he ate it all up <laughs> and Sam loved it. <laughs> you don't like your cranberry sauce? I think or cran apple sauce, like no? And now Sam's gonna cut up the uh, pie for us, so we're all kinda looking <laughs> what forward. Type of nuts? Uh, it's the almonds, you know, because like the candy bar has almonds in it. It's like a chocolate almond candy bar. Mm. I only want a small one. Have a tiny Mr. Yep. Bobby. Mm -hmm. That piece is too big for you. I'm kidding. It doesn't look very pretty on a dirty plate, though, does it? Yeah, small for Mr. Just Buzz. Oh my gosh. A tiny Mr. So good. Bobby. Want a piece, Joe? Look at this lineup of ingredients for tonight's supper. I am so looking forward to trying this recipe. This is actually the recipe that Emily shared in the A Country Life newsletter. So if you are not signed up for that, you're gonna want to. There's always, oh, there's always something in there, maybe a meal plan, maybe a new recipe, maybe a little extra video that Emily puts together. She always, always links to the videos for the week. I have noticed that some of my videos get pushed by YouTube much more than others, so there is a chance that sometimes you could miss a video um, if they don't show it to you in your suggested uh, feed column or something like that. Anyway, here we go. Tonight, I'm going to start with this chicken. So the other day when I cubed up chicken for whatever it was I was making, oh I know, for that chicken teriyaki, I uh, sliced these chicken breasts in half. Right over here I'm going to get my pan heating because I really want this to, my cast iron to get really hot so that the meat sears and gets that nice brown coating on it. I also have a pot of water, a little bit of salt in it. I'm going to get that going and boiling for the noodles. I'm going to salt and pepper both sides of the chicken breasts here. Oh. I'm still, my wrist is still hurting. It's hard. I can't use that. That hurts too bad. All right, here we go. Just the shake on kind <laughs> for those of us with sore wrists. I'm also going to add in some garlic and herb seasoning. Okay, it's a little loud, but I just flipped that over, so I just uh, seared it on the one side. I guess I might have liked it to be a little browner, but anyway, I turned it already, so I'll sear the second side for a few minutes, and then I'll put these four pieces of chicken in. 
So I cut the heat to low. I'm going to add in all of these pieces of chicken now. Because they did not, you know, they didn't cook all the way through. So I need to get them cooked all the way. I'm going to get this covered and just let it cook slowly. My lid isn't the perfect size, but it kind of just fits inside the rim and it works out actually quite well. Okay, the linguine over here is bubbling and boiling along nicely. And now it's time to get the sauce mixture put together. I have my smaller cast iron pan heating here over low heat. I put in one tablespoon of butter, another teaspoon of the minced garlic. I'm gonna let that just kind of cook away basically until that butter is melted. And then I'm going to add in Okay, I was just on the phone, <laughs> and so I did miss some of my filming, but this in here, you guys saw I melted a tablespoon of butter. I put in a teaspoon of ga minced garlic. I put in just a little drizzle of lemon juice, like maybe a tablespoon. I cooked, I stirred that around until I could smell the garlic. And then I added in one cup of ricotta cheese and a half a cup of the pasta water. I just scooped it right out of the pot. And then I put in a great big handful, so like two cups of spinach. And I've been just stirring that around, letting the spinach uh, wilt down. I did test it to see if it needed some salt. And yep, I added a little bit of salt to it. And now I'm going to peek at the chicken. Okay, the chicken is looking like it's getting really done. Oh boy. <laughs> and then half of this linguine I'm going to put right into that sauce. The other half I'll put right back into the pot here with a little bit of butter and some Parmesan cheese. The kids will probably have that and some chicken, but I really don't think they're going to want the sauce. But you never know. I really wanted to vlog all day today and here it is five to four and I'm finally getting turning on the camera. So I, instead of vlogging all day, I'm going to add this video to a week of meals uh, videos for you guys. So let me just show you here what I'm doing tonight. Tonight we're just going to have really simple frozen chicken patties and then my homemade french fries. So this is a bag of french fries. If you, I, I let me think of what video that was where I actually took a 10 pound bag of potatoes and I turned it all into french fries and cubed hash browns. If I can remember, I will link to that video. But anyway, this was, was like a solid chunk. I just brought it up here, whammed it on my counter a couple of times. It breaks up. And now I'm just gonna pour it into my colander and let it thaw just a little bit more so some of these chunks can kind of break apart. And I will shake it, it's gonna be very loud. Okay, maybe not that loud this time, but I will shake it until a lot of the ice crystals fall through. Since it's gonna take just a little bit for those french fries to thaw, and it is only four o'clock, so I have enough time before supper, I'm gonna get started on making just the basic Nestle Toll House chocolate chip cookie dough recipe. And I just want to give you guys a few tips. Number one, cream your butter until it's very, very light and creamy. I oftentimes will just put the mixer down, <laughs> turn it on, and walk away for a while. You know, maybe getting out my other ingredients, doing something else, but I really want the butter to get really, really creamy. Okay, see how light and fluffy that butter is? That's what I'm looking for. And now I'm going to do three-fourths cup of brown sugar, three fourths cup of white sugar, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just beat this until it's really, really light colored. Okay, next up I'm gonna put in the two eggs. I already put in the teaspoon of vanilla, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna keep whipping and whipping and whipping this until it's super light and creamy. While I make these cookies, I was just, it was just reminding me about when I go to my P.O. box. I just want you guys all to know that if you have sent me a 
postcard or a note or whatever it might be, I have read every single one of them and usually multiple times. And if you have sent something to me, I do try to get thank you notes out. Um, but sometimes it takes me a long, long time uh, to get to that. It can take a long time for me to get to writing out the thank yous. Anyway, these measuring spoons were sent to me. I just wanted to mention just how neat they are because they are magnetic. So when you put them into in here, they want to stick together. So you pull them out, you have everything that you need. It's neat how they're two-sided with the circle and the oval side, depending on what kind of container you're reaching into. Anyway, just really, really neat uh, measuring spoons. And I've been just having a fun time with these. So, and it just, when I, when I reached in to get these, I thought, I need to address that again. Thank you guys so much. When I first had started YouTube, really, I would have never guessed where it would have gone and um, I guess the impact that it has on people. I originally, when I first started, I just thought, hey, that would be fun to do. I enjoy talking and so why not uh, film? And I also just thought it would be like a form of entertainment. It's just good, wholesome entertainment, family entertainment. It'd be a neat way to kind of share. You know, when I meet somebody for the first time and, and they find out that my husband is a cranberry grower, they right away are have so many questions. Do cranberries grow in water? Da, 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 da. You know, just are, are, do they grow on bushes or trees or whatever it might be? So many questions. And that was another thing when I first started this. I thought it would be a really neat way to just kind of let people get a little peek into the cranberry farming um, industry. And then also, same with homeschooling. Whenever I would tell somebody yeah, I have seven kids and yeah, we homeschool. And it, there'd just be so many questions about how do you do that? And really you can homeschool a child with special needs. And so originally I just thought, again, with the homeschooling, I thought, oh, it'd be a good way to just be able to kind of let people have kind of a, uh, a little bit of an inside view of what homeschooling looks like when, when I mean, at that point when I had a lot of kids that I was homeschooling and uh, homeschooling special needs. Anyway, I just would have never guessed that it would have gone to so much with cooking and recipes and homemaking and that I would have so many people reach out to me and just share their stories, share how um, watching my channel just takes them maybe back to their childhood or now <laughs> I have the tears in my eyes so we'll have to turn the camera around but two one of the things too that really really has just meant so much to me is when when you all share your stories about how maybe you didn't grow up in a home that was um, loving or you didn't have parents who you thought cared about you watching the way I interact with my kids and just watching our interactions I guess I don't care if you see me get teary-eyed and just kind of watching our interactions as a family has just helped you to uh, work at being the best parent that you can be and those really really are heartwarming so anyway before I completely lose it here I need to keep making cookies and I have the oven on because I am so cold it's only 55 degrees that's what it's saying outside I feel like it's the same temperature in the house so let's get these cookies going here I need to get two and a quarter cups of flour. I always go just a smidge more flour in my cookies and then a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking soda. And then we're gonna put a whole package of chocolate chips in here, get it all mixed up. The key to a nice and chewy cookie is going to be this. Start by putting pretty good helpings of dough onto the pan. Um, and then what's going to really make your cookies look pretty and very, very presentable, kind of bakery-like, is to pick them up and then kind of give them a little roll. So let me see if I can set my camera up. So then what I'm going to do is just give them a really quick roll, and that just smooths out all the edges, and it gives them that bakery appearance. I don't always do this to my cookies, give them a roll, but when I do want them to look really pretty, this is what I do. My oven's preheated. I'm going to put these in for 10 minutes. Sometimes the first pan will take 11 minutes since the pan isn't hot yet, but I still put them in for 10 just to be on the safe side because I don't want them to get too dark. Okay, at 10 minutes I like to take the cookies out as long as they'd have like a couple little spots that look a little tan and then they're still almost look a little bit raw or undercooked and then just let them sit on the hot pan. Oh gosh. I mean, a lot of recipes will say two minutes. Sometimes I forget and they're on for like five or six minutes. Anyway, they should just rest on the hot pan until they seem nice and set. 
and then transfer them over to cool. These are going to stay chewy for days. Well, I guess I don't know that because they're going to be gone probably by tomorrow. I'm going to mix up a little bit of garlic and herb mayo. You know when you're at a restaurant and sometimes it just seems like, wow, you're like, I make a chicken sandwich at home and it just doesn't taste like it does at the restaurant. Oftentimes that's because at restaurants they will have a lot of sauces and seasonings and things like that. And so if you can find ways to just kind of take your home cooking up a notch, that really will give you kind of that out to eat sort of feeling. You know, tonight's meal is kind of almost just like a fast food meal, but it's at home and you know, I had to make it. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just going to put in some of this garlic and herb. Probably start with a half teaspoon or so of this garlic and herb, and I can always go up to a teaspoon if I need to. Okay, I'm going to use like my big toaster oven air fryer uh, setting tonight, and I'm just going to sprinkle on. I already put olive oil over top. Quite, quite a good amount of olive oil over the top of the french fries here and I'm going to put them in at 400 degrees. The air fryer um, setting will only allow me to do 25 minutes so I'll have to do these for 25 minutes and then a second 25 minutes. So I want to get these in now because it's actually already five o'clock. I should have gotten these in a half an hour ago but I got sidetracked with between cookies and then I was also making a making a list of some videos that I want to make and things like that. So anyway I better get these in.